Hello and welcome to part three of my overview of the governing ethics of all my states. I have created a new state recently, so eh, we'll start with this new state. They are a folkish commonwealth. This government is a nationalist populist republic that maintains loyalty by its exploiting common prejudices. So they basically exploit common prejudices and that sort of thing. So yeah. They are Okay, wait. Yeah, they Okay. They are supremacist demagoguery. They believe in supremacist demagoguery. Yeah. So I do not know how to pronounce that well, so uh yeah. I'm pretty bad at that. The government, uh, the government manipulates the population with saber-rattling rhetoric, rhetoric and appeals to common prejudices and fears. They're neoliberal, advocates for a re-evaluation of individual liberty and market principles against the social market economy, and advocates that government intervention in individuals and markets should be at a minimum. So they really just like the idea of, well, you know, them intervening in the market. Okay, and they have artifices. I don't know exactly if that was the right pronunciation, but I'm pretty sure it was. So yeah. Hmm. And the philosophical... philosophical philosophical ideological dispute over the value of knowledge the society ultimately decide that things sapiens sapient beings create their devices and crafts matter most so they believe that creating objects and you know making things things like cars vehicles that help society they believe that that is the priority of knowledge, basically. <clears throat> they have cramming education. Cramming is a method of education that places an emphasis on increasing the amount of knowledge by rate or aims to increase knowledge. They are republicanist, or they believe in republican ideas. This society believes that the greatest virtue is a Tamed by people of good character serving the common good. So yeah, this is my new one. They're called, uh, well... I basically just gave up trying to spell Gaelic. But just pretend that's Gaelic Confederation. And it all makes sense. Well, the next one is Egypt. They are a divine empire. This government is a form of spiritualistic autocracy. Everything is shaped by the official state religion and the ruler is worshipped as an infallible living god. Which is why I named it Egypt. Because well, I thought that would be accurate. <laughs> National Rituals In this country, aside from religious freedom, the emphasis is on state-sponsored rituals and ceremonies which are performed throughout the country. Bureaucrats in the ceremonial field occupy important positions in the country and people look forward to some to the same ceremonies as the festivals. Imperial Cult This society has a dominant state religion where the ruler is worshipped as a living deity. They have a caste system. This society has a strict class system based on religion and interaction with those of another class or changing jobs is strongly restricted. Did I say that? Ah yeah, that is strongly. Functional architecture. This society is renowned for its simple yet functional architecture. Though there are those who would refer to this building style as boring or even depressing, but in most cases New concrete does the job just as well as any other building material. They have an efficient bureaucracy. This society is renowned for its efficient, not only 
for its efficiency, not only do the mag trains run on time, but the colossal bureaucratic apparatus required to run an interstellar nation has been greatly streamlined. They're authoritarian, militarist, and spiritualist. Then there's the feudal empire which I've created. This government is a feudal autocracy where the monarch rules indirectly, granting offices and territories to vassals in exchange for obligations in the form of taxes and military service. So think of medieval Europe when thinking of this state. They have national rituals, they also have feudal society. This society is organized in a feudal manner with a monarch whose rule relies on powerful vassals that govern their territories with considerable autonomy. Caste system. This society has a strict class system based on religion and interaction with those of another class or changing jobs is strongly restricted. Knights. This society is a heretical militaristic system with a military leader, the head of the order ruling the country. Oh boy, that's very complex. Uh, a system with a military leader, the head of the order, ruling the country. Ah, yeah. This society considers itself the most superior government and is doing all it can to demonstrate its national power and prestige and to secure its interest. So yeah, I base this off medieval Europe. Or just the medieval world in general, I suppose. Ah, Bandit Kingdom. This government is organized like a massive crime syndicate where the strong prey on the weak and own any neighboring states are seen as little more than raiding targets. So they really like to raid stuff. Barbaric Despoilers. This society holds few things sacred to fight. Few things. This society holds few things sacred. To fight is to live, and the strongest may seize whatever they covet. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I said that right. Yeah, yeah. whatever they covet. Yeah, mm, that's correct. I'm unsure whether I'm saying it correctly or not. So that's why I question was I do. Warrior culture. This society has developed into a hardy warrior culture. Martial prowess is valued above all else and true glory can only be found on the field of battle. They have national rituals. In this country, aside from religious freedom, the emphasis on state-sponsored rituals and ceremonies, which are performed throughout the country. Bureaucrats in the ceremonial field occupy important positions in the country, and people look forward to the, some, to the same ceremonies as the festivals. Caste system. But people, and people look forward to the same ceremonies as the festivals, but... I don't get the festivals part, I mean, sure, but ceremonies and festivals are very different. This society has a strict class system based on religion and Interaction with those of another class or changing jobs is strongly restricted. So yeah, the Covier system. This society considers it the absolute right of the state to decide where its citizens live and work. They're authoritarian, they're militarist, and they're spiritualist. These guys are based off the Vikings. They're kind of meant to be a raiding state. They're just meant to raid around and just maraud every single state possible. It's like, yeah, they, they, they're they kind of there for raiding. Oh, uh, this one will be interesting. This, the Federal Republic of Germany. They are a moral democracy. This government is a pacifistic form of democracy firmly guided by moralist principles and non-violence. They have a parliamentary system. 
The Parliament system in this society encourages a free and lively debate. Curring favour with one of the dominant political factions can prove to be quite advantageous. Social welfare. This society is committed to helping the weak and the poor. And the poor are well equipped to receive generous security. Ah, well. Interesting spot to pit. That's, yeah. Uh, a people's democracy. This society is a democratic system orientated towards economic equality with a focus on the non-privileged, mainly workers and soldiers. We don't tr reject anyone who comes to us. This society is tolerant of the acceptance of others and accepts all immigrants as long as they have not committed serious crimes. And uh, this adds to the realism. I added this just for the realism for the realism factor. Truce and Reconciliation Commission. In this country, reflection on former dictatorships, wars, and acts of genocide has led to the public discovery and disclosure of wrongs for the past, press, present, future, for the present, future, and in the future. The interest of national ethics and communal harmony, the permanent committee established for this purpose, have no small impact on the national integration. For the past, present, and future. In the interest of national Essex and... Yeah, okay. But yeah. <laughs> I was just ring that a second time to make sure that I got that right. But so, yeah. Basically, they regret being a dictatorship. Which, I mean, and still are, so that's kind of an interesting thing. <laughs> I have got the opposite of this. So yeah. They're egalitarian, they're xenophile, and they're pacifist. Conflicts as a mean to an end is a ridiculous concept. It is by natural destruction to destroying what was to be obtained or given room to grow that that which was to be destroyed. So yeah. They basically basically the state Regrets being a dictatorship. Ever. Ah, Bulgarian People's Republic. They are a star empire. This government is a heretical and militaristic form of democracy with a single sovereign controlling both the government and the military. They are a police state and they have national zeal. To quash any traces of dissent, the population in this repressive society is carefully monitored and controlled by a large internal police force. Nationalistic zeal, a strong sense of nationalistic pride permeates all layers of this society. And then we have the military commissariat of the Gilder Hegemon. He, I think that's, uh, how you say it? They are military commissariat. This government is nominally democratic with the dividing line between the civil and administration, civil administration and the military having blurred to the point where they have largely become one in the same. They have functional architecture, they have healthy habits. They also have a symbolic monarchy. A symbolic monarchy is a monarch that acknowledges the existence of a, is a monarch you what? What? No monarchs ever do that. Wouldn't that be the state acknowledging? is a monarchy that acknowledges the existence of a monarch, but in which the monarch is said to have no functions related to a national to national government, but merely functions that symbolize the unity of the people and the permanence of the national of the national values, I suppose I could put there the nation in a spiritual and psychological sense. Byzantine bureaucracy. This society is largely largely governed by a complex and to the outsider, almost that burden system of bureaucracy and army of officials and functionaries work tirelessly to keep the government running smoothly and to ensure no citizens are allocated resources they cannot demonstrate a properly filed and triple stamped need for. So they're very bureaucratic. I also have a despotic empire. This government is a relatively pure form of autocracy with an absolute ruler that 
governed for state with an iron rippling appen appendage uh, uh what I don't know what even appendage Ah god Please state, to quash any traces of dissent, the population in this repressive society is carefully monitored and controlled by a large internal police force. We also have the Covier system. The society considers it the absolute right of the state to decide where its citizens live and work. They are authoritarian and they have fanatic xenophobe. They are meant to be based off Italy. Or rather, Italy during the 30s. And this is my martial empire, and they are extremely complicated. This government is a militaristic form of heretical, heretical autocracy where the state exists largely to support the military. Martial ability is highly valued and all citizens are regularly drilled in matters of war. Warrior culture. This society has developed into a hardy warrior culture. Martial prowess is valued above all else, and true glory can only be found on the field of battle. The Advanced Glory System The glory of this country is multi-layered and difficult for other countries to understand, but for us glory is supreme and obtaining it is an honor often more, often more important than life. Contempt for others This country openly abuses other countries and others to satisfy its self-esteem. Hmm. They also have imperialism. This society considers itself the most superior government and government and is doing all it can to demonstrate its national power and prestige and to secure its interest. Military regime. In this society, professional military personnel have a strong influence on the operation of the state under the guise of political neutrality. They're militarist, they, which means they can use the no retreat war doctrine. They are xenophobe, and they're authoritarian. This country is based off the Japanese Empire. It's kind of obvious. I kind of didn't really hide it as to what it's based off. Just these two traits together give it away. <clears throat> but yeah, the Gorgstin Alliance is meritocracy. An individual social... Station or personal connection should have no bearing on their profession. The sole basis for advancement in this society is demonstrated is demonstrated ability and talent. They are a moral democracy, so yeah. They also have a parliamentary system. The parliament system in this society encourages a free and lively debate. Curing favor with one of the dominant political factions can prove to be quite advantageous. And this was my original Plutarch, Agri or Plutarch Oligarchy. And the Shadow Council? Unbeknownst to its citizens, this society is actually milked from behind the scenes by a secretive Shadow Council. Princes must be kept, but the tyranny of the majority should also be guarded against. After all, what if the fools vote for the wrong candidate? <laughs> Please state. To quash any traces of dissent, the population in this repressive society is carefully monitored and controlled by a large internal police force. This is also one of my first uh, theocratic monarchies. They have imperialism and national rituals. So yeah. Okay, let's see. This is a military dictatorship. This government is a militaristic form of autocracy where the ruler serves as the undisputed head of the military which is firmly in control of the state apparatus. Police state, to quash any, for any traces of dissent, the population in this repressive society is carefully monitored and controlled by a large internal police force. Imaginary Socialism <clears throat> This socialist state with the idea with its ideal of paradise with society and the people working together is is on a journey towards an ideal unattainable called many unattainable tasks remain, but in general the government is acting in the interest of the people. So yeah, they have authoritarian militarist and materialist. 
Yeah, these guys just have the parliamentary system and Byzantine bureaucracy. They are a theocratic republic. This government is a spiritualistic form of democracy where a religious council supervises the democratic process and serves in an advisory role. <laughs> and uh, these guys are a direct democracy. This government is a materialistic form of democracy where citizens use computer networks to vote directly on most matters regarding the state. Beacon of Liberty, this society is a shining beacon of light in a sea of darkness. Liberty and individual freedoms are held in the highest regard here. Free Haven, this society has a well-earned reputation as a free haven. The tired, the poor, the huddled masses yearning to be breathed free air are all welcome here, regardless of their species of origin. Species of... Ah, species or origin. Mm. Common values. This society shares the common values that intelligent life in the galaxy has universal existent values as well. Cramming education. Cramming is a method of education that places an emphasis on increasing the amount of knowledge by rate or aims to increase knowledge. Demonstration culture. The right to demonstrate is widely recognized in this society, making it easy for groups and activ activists of various ideologies to make their views known to society. They're egalitarian, they're xenophile, and they're materialist. Yeah, this is a martial empire. They have a warrior culture and a police state. They're also fanatic spiritualist. But they also are military, so yeah. Our science has proved that consciousness regrets reality. We regard with patience the childlike efforts of those who do leave themselves in the other way around as they pay with their blocks of hard matter as this is in quotation marks interesting. This government is a militaristic form of heretical autoc autocracy where the state is just largely to support the military. Martial ability is highly valued and all citizens are regularly drilled in matters of war. Yeah, so these are some of my older ones. They're kind of outdated and uh, old. So yeah, merchant guilds, mining guilds. Ah, the criminal syndicate. These ones are extremely old. Well, they've got criminal heritage. This American corporation can trace its origins back to a crime syndicate that eventually grew powerful enough to supply all forms of local government. Corporate Empire. The company has expanded into every industry it's expanding to the point where there is no content it does not handle and a small elite reigns at the top of the heap. What? Oh, wow. Interesting. This government is an enormous and ruthless business syndicate which shares many of its operations practices with organized crime. So, they're basically just criminals who run a state. Yeah, some of these are really old. I haven't really used many of these ones down here for ages. But here's a trade league. This government is a form of Plutarch oligarchy, with, uh, oligarchy, where the state is made up of a mildred of free merchants and corporations and guilds that have been handed, banded together in a common commercial interest. Trading post. Good, mis good business is where you find it. This made corporation has a large tradition of spreading its influence through the establishment of trading posts. Their star bases are busy centers of trade. They also have this, they basically have corporations. This is a form of corporate government in which a few holding companies control many companies and the decisions made by a very small number of executives and elite are considered absolute. Vacation experience planning. The people of this society always had a lust for new and exciting experiences and so this miracle grew wealthy and powerful by providing them 
Their big break was pioneering both off-world tourism and the legal infrastructure to support it. They have scientific management. This business grew through precise and empirical tested management techniques that govern every aspect of employee life. The tools were expressed physical motions, work rhythm and all on and on off the clock from from cradle to grave. They have common values. This society shares the common values that intelligent life in the galaxy has universal existence values as well. They're just a theocratic monarchy. They have an aristocratic elite. This society has an entrenched community that occupies the upper echelons of society. They do national rituals. Yeah. This is another trade league. But they are free traders. The trading fleets of this mega corporation are bolstered by semi-independent free traders operating under license. They have manifest destiny. It is the goal of this country and the consensus of the people to continue to expand in the name of an obvious mission of the obvious mission. Openness and line of civilization are of utmost importance. They also have artificials in the philosophical ideological dispute over the value of knowledge the society ultimately decide that things sapient beings create, their devices and crafts matter most. Corporate Empire. This company has expanded into every industry, expanding to the point where there is no content that it does not handle and a small elite runs at the top of the heap. Education Consortium. This conglomerate specializes in providing high quality edo infotainment product experience to expand the minds of consumer pulps young and old. So yeah, these guys are a moral democracy, they are a free haven, and they have a parliament. This is an executive committee. This government is a materialistic form of oligarchy where a powerful bureaucracy governs the state and guides the citizenry towards productive and meaningful goals. They have merchant guilds and they're a police state. And the first one I ever created. And probably what would be considered the most uh, controversial one, but yeah. They are a star empire. This government is a radical and militaristic form of autocracy with a single sovereign controlling both the government and the military. They are a police state. To quash any traces of dissent, the population in this repressive society is carefully monitored and controlled by a large internal police force. They also have nationalistic zeal. A strong sense of nationalistic pride permeates all layers of this society. The erasure of traces. There were other countries, but I don't know where they were. Contempt for others. This country openly abuses other countries and others to certify its self-esteem. The Covea system. This society considers it the absolute right of the state to decide where its citizens live and work. This is based off Germany in the 30s. I mean... This uh, should be quite obvious what that's the reference to. But yeah, hmm, one of my first states. So yeah. <laughs> and I went all in historically accurate. Like humanoid, even the naming. I mean, sure that's not exactly a good, but instant research and ingenious, industrious, natural, natural physicians, extremely adaptive, rapid breeders, docile, very strong, resilient, conformist, all in one, more trade points, excessive births, and delicious bodies. Yeah. Yeah. We also have. That is their homeworld and that's their star system. They probably are one of the few ones where I could consider giving them this. But yeah. As for their ship appearance, 
I decide to give them the Empire ship set that I have for one of my mods, just because, well, the Empire's best of the Third Reich and I just thought it would be fitting. Oh, and yes, I use the proper title, and even a historical... Oh, and, well, the air title also makes a lot of sense. So, yeah. Well, that was my whole list of all the different states and their governing ethics. I hope you liked the three parts of this series. Rather... Or rather, just the three parts of the overview. But anyway. Mm. Goodbye.